This is the second part of module three, looking again at risk, uncertainty and vulnerability to poverty, key lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic. We will be looking more in terms of the multidimensional poverty approach. And in fact, UNDP has a global multidimensional poverty index. And we will also talk specifically for the African continent, the Africa COVID-19 Community Vulnerability Index. So why do we go for multidimensional poverty measure? If we go by SEN 1992, poor people's lives can be battered by multiple deprivations that are each of independent importance. So we should not focus only on income. There are other dimensions which are very important. Monetary poverty measures look at only one dimension of being poor, yeah, looking at income, whereas other dimensions of poverty like education, health, housing, standard of living will provide a better and comprehensive understanding of poverty. That's why we talk about multidimensional poverty. And there is a multidimensional poverty index, which has been launched in 2010 by the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative and UNDP. And this MPI, Multidimensional Poverty Index, is updated annually. It's a global MPI, but countries do have also the national MPI where they, they use specific indicators which they think is more appropriate for their country. The global MPI in fact measures acute multidimensional poverty across more than 100 developing countries. It measures each person deprivations across 10 indicators in three equally weighted dimensions, health, education, and standard of living. So by identifying both who is poor and how they are poor, then this global MPI complements the international $1.90 a day poverty rate. Like I just mentioned, several countries have developed their own multidimensional poverty measures at the national level because they may think that, okay, for one country, let's say, uh, education is more important for another country, health is more important for another country, housing may be more important. So it depends on the specificity of the country. We will look at the global MPI, right? This is done in order for comparison purposes. If we use the same indicators and the same dimensions, then we can compare countries, which makes it good in terms of analysis. But as I said, you can design your own MPI for your country. I hope that at the end of this module, you will think about how you can design an MPI for your country, what, what dimensions you think are important and what indicators you think are relevant for your specific country. So let's take the, the global multidimensional poverty index. We will explain the different dimensions and the different uh, indicators and also how to calculate it, how you come with an MPI. So the three dimensions of poverty, which the MPI looks at are health, education, standard of living. So these are the dimensions. And from that, we need to get the indicators. For health, it is measured by nutrition, child mortality. For education, it is measured by years of schooling, school attendance. For standard of living, it's measured by access to cooking fuel, sanitation, drinking water, electricity, housing, and assets. We will use specific questions to measure each of these indicators. So this is basically what I just mentioned in terms of the dimensions, indicators, and what we will calculate at the end is intensity of poverty or headcount ratio which we can use as indicators for the MPI. So let's see the 10 indicators, right? So we have two indicators under education, two under health, and we have six under standard of living, which makes it a total of 10 indicators. What is done within the MPI is that each dimension has an equal weight. So we have three dimension, meaning that each dimension is one third. So education has got one third as weight, 
have one third and standard of living one third. So they are equally weighted, these three dimensions. Now, under each dimension for education, I have two indicators. So one third divided by two will be one sixth each. Same for, for health, I have two indicators. One third divided by two means one sixth as weight for each indicator. Under standard of living, I have six indicators. One third divided by six may make it one eighteenth for each indicator. So the weightage is very important. Now we have given within the MPI a weight equal weight and a weight of one third uh, for each one of them and equal weighting for the indicator as well. But this can change. You can decide that, okay, for, for your country, child mortality will be having a higher weight or nutrition will be high, higher weight. But the problem with changing weights might be also subjective, right? And it might be difficult for comparison purposes later on. So coming to how to measure these indicators, there is a specific indicators where data can be available from survey, uh, which are undertaken at the national level or surveys undertaken at the international level if you have comparative data. So you will see, for instance, let's take uh, child mortality. Maybe a question will be if there has been any child under the age of 18 years who has died in the five years preceding the survey. Or in nutrition, if there is an adult under 70 years of age in the household for a child who is undernourished. In terms of education, you can look at the years of schooling completed, uh, school attendance. Is there any school age child who is not attending school up to the age at which he or she would complete, let's say, class eight? It depends on which class and which age education is compulsory. For example, in Mauritius, education is compulsory till the age of 16. So a child has to go to school. So it depends on your country, uh, what is the school attendance and whether it's compulsory and at what age. Then we come to standard of living. So access to cooking fuel. Is the, does the household cook with dung, wood, charcoal, or coal? then we will know the, the level of vulnerability to poverty of this particular household. The household sanitation facility is not improved or it is improved, but shared with other household. This is in line with the SDG guideline. Drinking water, does the household have access to improved drinking water or safe drinking water is at least 30 minute walk from home? Electricity, does your household has electricity or not? Then we can come to housing materials, depending on roof, on floor, is it adequate? Asset, does your household have more, more than one of these assets, radio, TV, telephone, etc. So these questions are there in surveys, which are undertaken at the national level, maybe household surveys, household budget surveys, etc. So we know the dimensions, we know the indicators, we know the weights. They are rather flexible, as I mentioned, depending on your country, depending on the data which you have, depending on the specificity of your country, which dimension or variables you think are more important. Then the next thing is to set deprivation cutoff for each indicator. I would explain that in a bit. Apply to indicators for each person from the same survey. So if you have a comprehensive survey, you can just use that survey to do, to do your computation and to get your MPI. Then you set a poverty cutoff to identify who is poor. Then you calculate the adjusted headcount ratio, which at the end of the day, this is what we want uh, and which can be used uh, as an indicator. Okay. So we are clear about the unit of analysis. We can do it at an individual or household level or for community, for school, or let's say for a district, right? Or region, an area, et cetera. Then you, we've chosen the dimensions. In this case, for the global MPI, we've chosen education, health, and standard of living. You can extend that to public services, social services, et cetera. Then we came with our indicators, which I just explained 
a bit earlier, what are the indicators? You can change it depending on the data which you have, as long as they are simple indicators and they are not highly correlated. So what we need to do now is to set the prevention cutoff. What does that mean? For example, if a dimension is schooling, that is how many years of schooling have you completed? Suppose if I say six years or more, then this might identify non-deprivation. If you've gone to school for six or, or more years, then you're not deprived. But if you have go, you have attended school only like between one and five years, then I would identify you as being deprived. So it depends on, on, on countries. It depends on what is your unit of analysis and how you define the variable. I'm just giving an example here. Then you apply poverty lines, right? So I would explain that how we do it in an example. For example, you can have indicators like access to health clinic or self-reported morbidity body mass, right? And then you identify people as being deprived or non-deprived for each indicator. Then you count the number of deprivation for each person, okay, with equal weighting. So let's see table one, where I would be answering step four, five, and six, because one, two, three, we already did within the global MPI. So let's see how we do that. Suppose I have four persons, right, in my database. Of course, you will not be having four. It will not be representative. So we just take a snapshot there. And the UNDP does that well with the global MPI, giving us four person and then try to explain uh, in terms of deprivation and non-deprivation. So suppose I have my indicators. Remember, the indicators were health, education, living standard. Uh, I can talk about empowerment, autonomy there. So now, within health, let's say access to good health clinic or body mass index, right? So person one is non, not deprived in terms of access to a good health clinic. So he or she can access to, can have access easily. So he or she is not deprived. In terms of body mass index, she, let's say he or is deprived, maybe in terms of weight, underweight. In terms of housing quality, it's not deprived, so it's ND there. In terms of employment, there is deprivation, maybe that person is unemployed. In terms of quality of education, maybe he or she didn't go to school for a number of years, right? Maybe three years of schooling or five years of schooling, which are not enough. In terms of autonomy, so it's also deprived, right? So if I count the deprivation, I get a total count of four Ds there, which means deprivation. I look at person two, I have only two deprivations, right? Two areas where there are deprivations. Person three has got three areas where there is deprivation, whereas person four is deprived in all of these dimensions, right? Six in all. So I have counted the number of deprivations for each person. So it's four, two, three, six, right? Now I say, okay, those people, so I set a cutoff. I said those people who've got four indicators where they are deprived, four or more indicators where they are deprived, they will be considered as poor, right? So this is, again, you can change that. Let's say in this case, it says people who are poor will be defined as those being deprived in at least four indicators. So person one will be deprived and person four will be deprived and will be poor. So they are poor. Person one and person four are poor because they have four or more indicators where they are deprived. So these are step five and six, which I've just explained. Now, step seven is to set the second cutoff, right? In table one, K is set to four, and the person whose data are shaded or identified as poor. I just did that. So I've already included that in the table where I've shaded them as being poor. Then I look at all the information on the non-pool and replace with zeros. 
okay? So I will show table two in a bit where I replace all the information on the non-pool with zero value. Then I divide the number of pool people by the total number of people. In that example, I had four person, so K equal to four. The head count is simply the proportion of people who are pool in at least four indicators. I had two people who were pool in at least four indicators, so it will be two over four, which is 50 person, right? So the head count will be two, those who are pool two, and the total number of people in that data set were four, so two divided by four is 50. So we go to our table, same table. I've just replaced, remember person two and person three, they were non pool so I've replaced all their values there by zero. Then we've shaded person one and person four because they are pool, right? And I'll set the cutoff here four and shade pool and replace non pool by zero. This is what we did. Now, the next step is to calculate the average poverty gap. I will call that A. So in table two, person one suffers from four deprivation, four out of six deprivation. And person four suffers from six out of six deprivation. So I will be dividing that by the total number of pool persons. So four over six for person one, plus six over six for person two, divide by the number of pool people. In that case, there were two. So I get five, six. This is the average poverty gap. The next one is to calculate the adjusted headcount, M note. Now we all know that the data is binary, right? Zero, one. Then the multidimensional poverty is measured by the adjusted headcount, that is M, which is calculated as H times A. So we've calculated H already, which was two over four, right? Number of people equal to two, to divide by total number of people in that data, which was four times five over six, which is A, which we just calculated above, and I have five divided by 12. Now, in this case, I have used equal weightage, but you can change the weight, you can change the indicators, you can use PCA or arithmetic mean to, to, to calculate your indicator and to get the weights there, right? So there are different methods which are used to get the weights. It can be subjective or it can be derived through uh, equal weightage or it can be used through the, it can be derived, sorry, through the principal component analysis. So here we come with the MPI being equal to H times A, which I have already explained using the example before. So out of this global MPI, we say that people are counted as multidimensionally poor if they are deprived in one third or more of 10 indicators, so 33%, where each indicator is equally weight weighted within its dimension. The MPI assesses poverty at the individual level. If someone is depriving a third or more of 10 of these weighted indicators, then it is called MPI pool, right? And we talk about multidimensional poverty here. So we can talk about incidence, intensity of poverty, we can do it for different population subgroup. You can differentiate between women, men. You can differentiate between elderly, young people, etc. You can differentiate across areas, across regions. So it can be broken in terms of different dimension. And you can better understand the poverty situation in a given area or community. So what we can see from the from the global MPI is that across the world, across 109 countries and 5.9 billion people, you will see that there are 1.3 billion who are multidimensionally poor. More than 67% live in middle income countries, right? And around 
644 million are children aged under 18. Many live in Sub-Saharan Africa or South Asia. So what we can say is that it doesn't only give us the situation uh, of a particular country, but of a group of countries, if we focus on the global MPI, it tells us the characteristics of those people who are poor, in which region uh, they come from, what are the characteristics, what are the socio-demographics of these people living in poverty. The next index we look at is the Africa COVID-19 Community Vulnerability Index, where this is very much uh, uh, interesting. It's developed by UK Aid, and it again takes different aspects of, of vulnerability to poverty, linking socioeconomic vulnerability, population density, access to housing. Then it, it relates more to COVID-19, this one. This is why we took it as an example. Uh, it looked at the health system, epidemiological factors, fragility in terms of food security, civil unrest, and also looking at an aging population. So they take different dimensions and also different indicators to measure these different dimensions. I didn't include all the information on the Africa COVID-19 Community Vulnerability Index, but I would suggest you go deeper into that. If you want to do it for your, your community, the data is there for many African countries. It's mainly the DHS, the Demographic Health Surveys, or you can use data from your local statistical office. There, there is also data from WHO uh, and Living Standards Survey there from the World Bank, uh, different surveys which have been carried out and also the different uh, data from UN, which you can use. So I would advise going deeper into that community vulnerability index, which is linked to COVID-19 and try to see which factors or which uh, uh, variables are important and which dimensions are important first and which variables can be used to measure these dimension with the data which you have for your country. This could be an interesting analysis uh, for you to, to do, to, to undertake, to look at vulnerability to poverty in the midst of COVID-19. So thank you. This is for module three, and we have covered in all uh, two uh, parts of that module, looking at vulnerability to poverty, which is the second part and the first part, we've been looking at COVID-19 uh, systemic risk effects, uh, how they are all connected. And in this part, we've been looking at vulnerability to poverty in the midst of COVID-19, how COVID-19 have been affecting the most vulnerable groups and aggravating the situation for many within the African continent. Thank you.